proudly we hail... From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail another airman of the United States Air Force. The story is entitled, A Letter to a Colonel, and this is the amusing story of an airman and how he tried to better himself when it really wasn't as necessary as he still believed. Proudly we hail the United States Air Force and our first act curtain in just one moment. Here's important news for all ex-servicemen. You may be qualified to enlist in the United States Air Force at a higher grade and with higher pay than you realize. The United States Air Force has a prior service program that offers big benefits to veterans of all the armed forces. So for full details, you write or visit your nearest Air Force recruiter right away. Ask him for the free folder for prior servicemen. This folder will show you how you can put your service gain skills to work to your best advantage. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. Dear Colonel Hickman, I am taking the great liberty of writing this letter to you because now that everything's over, I think you should know how your organization has helped one airman to get himself straightened out. When I sat down to write this, I thought I could sort of keep it short, but now I see it won't be that simple. I guess the best way to start is on a day about four months ago. I'm a control tower operator here on my base, and on that day, I was just finishing up my tour of duty when Airman First Class Ed Young dropped around early to relieve me. What's on the schedule for tonight, Bill? Oh, not much, Ed. There's a curious C-47 departing for Washington at 2030 and some scheduled transports due to arrive later in the evening. Mm -hmm. Should be no trouble for you tonight. Yeah, if the weather holds. That's one nice thing about night shifts. Gives you time to relax. Although it does cut down on one's social life. Yeah. Speaking of social life, what do you got on tonight? Well, I, I guess I got a date. You guess, don't you know? Well, sure, I know. Who is? Betty McKay. <laughs> well, you know, I've told you about it. Yeah, her. yeah. Seems to me you've been having quite a few dates with her lately. You're a regular private eye, aren't you? Well, sure, she's a nice girl. She's nice company, that's all. Oh, yeah. Who are you trying to kid? When a guy starts seeing a girl three times a week, there's more to it than just nice company. What do you mean? I mean that somebody's getting serious about somebody. Come on, what are you trying to hide it for? There's nothing wrong with that. Guy's got to think about settling down sometime. I'm not trying to hide anything, Ed. It's, it's just that I never thought about it that way, but well, I guess you're right. I am serious about oh, it. Oh, you sure are a hard one to get anything out of. Okay, so you're serious about it. What are you going to do about it? Well, I, I don't know if uh, I should do anything. I, I mean, I guess it's all sort of one-sided. Look, chum, what do you expect the poor girl to do? Propose to you? Now, look, I know you're sort of shy, but this is one time you've got to crawl out of that shell of yours and tell her what's on your mind. Then you'll find out whether it's one-sided or not. Look, let me give you a little advice, huh? Now, I guess if there's one thing you can say about me, I am a good listener. And for the next hour, I listened while Ed gave me the lowdown on the Romeo and Juliet stuff. But as he said, he had to propose five times to his wife before she accepted, so I guess he was speaking from experience. I listened to him carefully and even made some notes. Okay. You got it all now? I think so. Fine. Now, you get right down there and put it into action tonight. Remember what Confucius said. He who hesitates is a dead duck. Confucius might have been a wife. He never met Mr. and Mrs. McKay, Betty's folks. As soon as I walked in their front, full of the old do-or-die spirit... Well, good evening, Bill. Just in time. Okay. Uh, just in time? Yes, Bill. We were just wondering who to get for a fourth at Canal. Uh, maybe Bill... Oh, does... nonsense. Nothing like a game of cards to take work. I, I remember when uh, <clears throat> I was in the Air oh, Force. Oh, that's and... enough. The table. Uh, okay. Uh, give me a hand, will you? Knowing what I know now, I should have said no, grabbed Betty, and got out of it. I 
couldn't get a word in edgewise as usual, and Betty and I were stuck with two hours of canasta. By 10.30, though, Mr. and Mrs. McKay excused themselves and went to bed. At last, I was alone with Betty. Now was my chance. I didn't know you liked canasta so much, Phil. Well, I, I don't like it much. Then why'd you spend two hours of your time playing it? Well, your folks... My and... folks. They're both dears, but sometimes... Oh, well. Do you like a cup of coffee? No, 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 thanks. Betty, would you turn on the radio? Get some music, maybe? All right. How's that? Oh, is that a note you got there? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, just uh, brushing up on some instructions. Uh, landing instructions, kind of. Oh. Betty, I... I, uh, I've got something to say to you. Yes, Bill. Think it'll rain tonight? Rain? Well, I haven't checked the weather reports lately, but I could call the weather bureau for you and find out. No, I, 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 I didn't mean to ask you that. What I meant to say was... Well, we've known each other five months about. That's right. And five months is... Five months. Bill, are you sure you wouldn't want some coffee? No, no, I'm not thirsty. I'm just, uh... Listen, Betty, we've known each other five months. You said that twice. I know, but there's something you should know, which you probably do know already, but but Ed says I should let you know so that we both know. Uh, I mean, that is... Uh, what in the world are you talking about, and who's Ed? I, he's, a, he's a guy I work with, but I, I guess it's no use. I'll tell you some other time. All right, if you want to. By the way, I have something that I wanted to tell you, too. Oh, yes? I just got a letter today from Jim Beckwith, a sergeant. Do you know him? Back, back with? No, I don't think so. Oh, I thought maybe you would. He was stationed at the base one time. He used to be a sort of friend of mine once. Friend? Uh-huh. Do you know he's only been in the Air Force two years and he's staff sergeant already? Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's interesting. How long have you been in? Me? Oh, well, I enlisted right after I graduated from high school. And you're airman second class? Yes. Well, Jim's a flyer, and maybe that's why he's a sergeant already. He's a flyer? Yeah. He's a loadmaster on a cargo plane, and he writes that he's going to drop by on a visit some weekend. And that's all I needed to hear, and that's all I did hear. For the rest of the evening, she kept talking about this guy Beckwith and how he was making something of himself. I didn't have a chance to say anything. And anyway, what she said started me thinking. On the way back to the base, on the bus, I uh, finally came to the conclusion that if I wanted to be serious about marrying, I'd better start thinking about my career. The next day, I dropped around to the orderly room to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with the first sergeant. Yeah, Adamson, it's on your mind. Well, sergeant, it's this way. A fellow's got to stop now and then to take a look at himself. You know, where he stands, where he wants to go, and how long it's going to take him to get there. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to go? Well, I figure on filling your shoes someday. My shoes? No, no, not exactly. I, I mean, I want to be a first sergeant someday. Oh, well, that's different. A very worthwhile and commendable aim, Airman Adamson, if I may say so. <laughs> but one that requires the very highest type of personnel. Yeah, I know that, Sergeant, and I, I know you can't become a first sergeant overnight. But I would sort of like to hasten up the process a bit, and I thought maybe you could give me some advice. I'll be only too glad to. First, you've got to do the best you can in the job you got now. But at the same time, you've got to prepare yourself for bigger and better things. Now, let me give you a suggestion. Oh, hi, Bill. Here, there's a place for your tray right here. Hi, Ed. All right, this fried chicken sure looks good, yeah. huh? It's the Air Force, pal. Even our food has to fly. Hey, how'd you make out last night? I goofed, Ed. Yeah, how come? Well, I got trapped in a two-hour game of canasta, and that sort of cooled me canasta. off. Canasta? Yeah, but I found out something. I haven't got a right to be serious about a girl until I've got something to offer. So I talked to the first sergeant this morning about how I could get ahead faster. Well, as Confucius said, he who is ambitious never washes dishes. What'd the first have to say? Well, he gave me a good idea. Do you ever hear of ECI? 
Hmm? ECI. Extension Course Institute, a oh, sort of correspondence course run by Yusuf out of the Air University. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I remember reading something about it. Well, the first says they have an officer candidate course, and he suggested I enroll in it, give me a general improvement of myself. And from there, I could go on to specialized courses in whatever field I wanted. That sounds good. You going to? Yeah. I sent in an application already. I haven't got much time. Yes, sir, I really put out during the next few weeks. Every spare minute I could find, I spent studying. Military courtesy, drills, and so forth. The one I really wanted to get was number 18, effective expression. That's why I was going at it so fast. But by the time number five was finished, I was beginning to feel a little more sure of myself. So I called Betty and made a date to take her to the dance at the service club. Oh, no, a mambo. Let's sit this one out, Bill. I'm not so good at South American dancing. Well, neither am I. Care for a Coke? Okay. Here you are. Thanks. Mmm. Oh, it's good. Let's go out on the patio and cool off a bit. Okay. Oh, look. Isn't that the most beautiful moon you ever saw? Sure is. It's nice seeing you again, Bill. It's been so long. Yeah, uh, I've been busy, kindly. You know, studying. I understand. Duty before pleasure. <laughs> At least I, I hope it's pleasure. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. What are you thinking about? Oh, nothing. Say, Betty, did you know that the hand salute is a sort of greeting between military people? The hand salute? Uh, no, I didn't. Gee, I never saw so many stars. Oh, what a heavenly night. Mm-hmm. Something else I bet you never knew. At certain times, it's good manners in the service to keep your hat on in the room. Yes? Yes, whenever we're under arms. Arms. Um, you know something, Bill? It's a little chilly. Yeah, okay, we'll go back inside. And another thing, military courtesy. I don't want to go back inside, Bill, really. Military courtesy on a night like this. Well, what's the matter? Did I do something wrong? Never mind. Take me home. That's all I want now. And after that... Well, explain the hand salute to someone else, but be sure you don't pick a night when there's a full moon to do it. You're listening to the proudly we held production, A Letter to a Colonel, and we will return for our second act in just one moment. But first, when you make an investment, you want it to pay off, right? Well, men, how about those years you invested in the armed forces, learning skills, gaining experience valuable to yourself and your country? You can make those years pay off in huge dividends today by returning to the armed forces as a member of the United States Air Force. Your Air Force recruiter has a free folder that will give you full details. So you write or visit him now. Ask for the prior serviceman's folder. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. Well, Colonel, whoever said silence was golden should have ridden on the bus when I took Betty home that night. He'd have changed his mind. But she was hopping mad, and I... Well, I wasn't what you'd call the picture of a laughing boy, either. Not that I was sore at her, but at myself. I had put my foot in it again, and this time I couldn't blame it on Canasta. When I got off the bus at the base terminal... Hi, Bill. Oh, hi, Ed. Are you all finished tonight? Yep. Going home now to hit the hay. How was it? it was rough. No ceiling hardly, so I had to use ground control approach to bring in a C-119 by radar. Those GCA boys really know their business. Where are you coming from? Oh, I just took Betty home from the service club dance. Oh, yeah. How's the romance coming? Not so good. I guess ECI isn't quite the right thing either. I guess nothing will help me. Well, wait a minute. What's it got to do with ECI? Well, I, I wanted to show her that I was serious about my career, and I tried to tell her a few of the things I had learned so far, but... Uh... Well, I don't think she was interested. Well, what'd she say? Well, we were out on the patio and... Uh... On the patio? Yeah. Oh, no. Look, Buster, 
When a gal gets you alone on the patio and there's a moon out, brother, there's only one thing she's interested in. Romance with a capital R. No wonder she was sore. If I was you, I'd make with the apology, but quick. You know, as Confucius... Uh Uh-oh, here comes my bus. Now think over what I said, Bill. I did think it over, and I began to see that Ed had a point. So the next evening, I once more made the trip to town and Betty's home. I didn't phone her I was coming because I thought she might tell me not to bother. Instead, I took the chance that she'd be there. She was there, all right. Why, Bill, this is a surprise. Hi, Betty. Can I, can I talk to you a minute? Why, uh... Well, I don't see why not. Come on in. Hello, this is very interesting. <laughs> oh, hello, Bill. Oh, it's nice to see you again. Hello. It's nice to be. Bill, I'd like you to meet Sergeant Jim Beckwith. You remember I told you about him. Well, glad to meet you, fella. How are you? He got in a day earlier than he expected. Yeah, they moved our schedule up a day. We've got to pick up a load here and then take off again Sunday night. Uh, Jim's been telling us of his experience. Yeah. Uh, go on, Jim. And where was I? Oh, oh yeah, Alaska. Well, sir, our 3,500-mile trip from Kentucky was nearing its end. Now, there we were in our C-119, jam-packed with paratroopers. And as loadmaster, it was up to me to see that they were dropped in the fastest time possible. You mean you were in charge of all those men? Well, until they jump, sure. Anyway, I'd figured out something I hoped would break the record. As we approached the drop point, I gave the ready signal. Everyone was tense, but I suppose I was the most... Must have been all of six feet three, black curly hair, clear blue eyes. And as he sat there holding the attention of everyone, I could see why Betty thought so much of him. And I knew that if it was to be a case of her choosing between the two of us, I wouldn't stand much of a chance. You Air Force men certainly have interesting lives, Jim. How about you, Bill? Don't you have any exciting stories to tell? Me? Oh, gosh, Mrs. McKay, I, I never gave it much thought. I might have, but I don't think I could tell him as well as Sergeant Beckwith. Oh, Bill, what? Never mind. Would anybody like some coffee? Oh, sure, I'd love to. Uh, Jim, tell us about the time you went to Greenland. When Betty went into the kitchen, I followed her. Bill, would you get some cups, please? Yeah, okay. Uh, Betty, uh, about last night. I'm sorry. What for? I'd forgotten all about it. All about it. There's cream in the refrigerator, Jim. Yeah, I wanted to tell you something that I've been wanting to tell you for some time, but somehow the uh, words just, you know, don't, don't come out right. And Betty, I... Yes, Bill? I... Oh, what's the use? I, I guess I'm not much good at anything. Bill, why do you always say that? You say it so often, I'm beginning to believe it. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm sorry. Betty, let's get out of here and go someplace where we can be alone. Not tonight, Bill. I've got a date with Jim. Will you carry the tray in for me, please? What happened after that, I don't remember too much. All I know is that I figured my goose was cooked, that I had finally lost out to this Beckwith guy, and that I had no one to blame but myself. When I relieved Ed at the tower, I told him what I had done. A letter? You mean you wrote a letter to her telling her that it's all over between you two? Yeah. I mailed it just now. Oh, boy, that's bad. Whenever you put anything like that in black and white, that cinches it. Ed, it's the only thing I could do. If, if I'm not even man enough to tell her how I feel about her, then I don't deserve her. How's the weather picture? Sure doesn't look good from here. Oh, we're sitting right on minimums. Base weather figures the front to move through by morning. Here's a traffic picture. AF15677 has just gone over to GCA and ought to be on final in a couple of minutes. He's cleared for a full stop landing on runway 13. We've got an estimate on an inbound C119, AF52134, due over the range at 32. Last official weather is 600 ceiling, Viz 1 mile, light rain, wind southeast at 8. Okay, Ed, I got it. Well, I guess I'll be running along. It's past midnight, I'm kind of sleepy. Look, it's tough, Bill, but you should have talked to me first. Jackson, approach control. This is AF-52134 declaring an emergency with one engine feathered, estimating your station at 3-2 at 6,000 feet. Uh Uh-oh. Request immediate descent to lower altitude. GCA approach your base. We're having trouble reading low frequency range. Position now uncertain. Estimating 25 miles, your station inbound. Can you read me? Over. Get that, Ed. Alert the AO and notify crash rescue for me, will you, while I help this bird down? 
AF-52134, this is Jackson, approach control. Roger on your emergency descent. Stand by one for further clearance. Jackson weather, ceiling 600 overcast. One mile viz with light rain, wind southeast at 8. Landing runway 13, altimeter 2968. How about a long count for a DF steer? Roger, Jackson, approach control. This is AF-52134, giving a long count for a DF steer. One, two... Three, Ed, get on four, that drop line to CAA five, and advise them. AF-52134 has declared an emergency nine, with one engine out. He ten, wants immediate descent in GCA. Ten, we need it clear below 6,000 for 50 seven, miles. His six, position six, estimate may be five, off. Right, right. Four, three, two, one. This is AF-52134. Over. AF-52134, got your count okay. Your bearing is 165 degrees from the station. Steer 345 degrees to field. Over. Roger, approach control. Taking up heading of 345 degrees. Hello, GCA. This is the tower. We have an emergency. AF-52134, C-119, wants a quick descent from 6,000 in a GCA. He's got one feathered, so turn him easy. Just got a DF bearing on him, 165 degrees. He's steering 345 degrees direct to base, distance out estimated 25 miles. Where have you got AF-15677 now? 677, just turning, final six miles out. Keep him coming and don't let him miss. We've got to get that guy out of the way. Center says it's okay to dump 134 with respect to 677 and advise when he vacates 5,000. Okay, Ed. AF-52134, you're cleared to descend immediately to 2,500 MSL. GCA is standing by. Report leaving 6 and 5,000. Advise amount of fuel and number of passengers aboard. Do you have H channel on your VHF? Over. Roger, Jackson Control. We have H. Hotel. Now leaving 6. We have 45 minutes fuel aboard with six passengers. Tower, we have a target 23 miles southeast. How about an identifying turn? Okay, GCA. I'll turn him right 15 degrees. AF-52134, GCA advises they have a target 23 miles southeast. For positive identification, turn right to heading 360. Continue your descent. Roger, control. Turning right to heading of 360, leaving 5,000. Ed, give that to CAA. Okay. Turn observed, Tower. We're ready to take him. AF-677 now in the clear with runway in sight, switching to you on channel B. Okay, GCA. 134 will be coming over to you on channel H. AF-52134, GCA has you positively identified. Change immediately to channel H, cleared for GCA approach and landing. Good luck, 134. Approach control out. Jackson Tower, this is AF-677 on the runway. Request taxi instructions. Just about then, visibility went down to where my feelings were. Zero and the operations officer closed down the field. Ed went down to the cafeteria and brought up some coffee for me. While we were sitting there drinking it... Hey, Adamson. Sergeant Beckwith. Man, are they? Say, were you the controller helping us in? You mean that ship? Yeah. Well, thanks for helping bring us down okay. That was my ship, all right. AF-52134. 52134? Uh Uh-huh. The (laughs) C-119? Sure. The AC and the rest of the crew's in there, thanks, too. That's okay. I'm glad to help. But I thought you were here for the weekend. Well, I thought so, too, but we got a hurry-up call to return to our base. Say, where's there a phone where I can put in a long-distance call? I want to call my fiancé and let her know we'll be delayed. Fiancé? Yeah. Yeah, I called her before we took off, so I better You mean you're going to get married to another girl? Another girl? Yeah, I I mean, isn't isn't Betty McKay your girlfriend? Betty McKay? Oh, no, no. Betty's just a good friend, that's all. My family's known the McKays for years. We were neighbors. Say, wait a minute, do... Did you think that well, Betty sure and I... sure did. <laughs> Say, Ed, will you hop down to the mailbox and see if my letter's gone out yet? That's got to be stopped somehow. But it was too late. Ed came back and told me the delivery had already gone out. There was only one other way I could think of stopping it. The rest of my night shift was fairly quiet, but early the next morning, as soon as I was through, I caught a bus to town, made a beeline for Betty's house, and parked myself beside the McKay's mailbox hoping to talk the mailman into giving me the letter first. No, no, can't do that. That's against regulations. This mail's got to be delivered to the party it's addressed to. Sorry, son, I'd like to help you out, but... That's okay. What? Bill! What are you doing here so early? Good morning, Mr. McKay. I'm beginning to wonder myself. Yeah, well, I don't think Betty's up yet. Hey, but I'll tell her you're here. Yeah, I'll just get the mail. Uh, Mr. McKay, would you do me a favor? Huh? There's a letter there that I wrote to Betty. I don't want her to get it. Oh? <laughs> How come? Well, it's like this. And that's the way it is. Uh-huh. Dad? Oh. Bill, what on earth is... Well, Bill has something on his mind, Betty. Oh, yes? Is there any mail for me, Dad? Uh, for you? Oh, well, let me see. Uh, no. 
Uh, no, there's none for you. Betty? Yes, Mom? Telephone for you. Coming. Thanks, Mr. McKay. Uh, here's your letter. Bill, you're a fine young fella and a credit to the Air Force, but you're mistaken about a lot of things. I know. Plenty. First, uh, let me tell you something about women. And this goes for my daughter, too. Men always have a tendency to place them on a pedestal, to, to worship them from afar. Well, now, up to a certain point, women like that sort of thing. But then, well, they like to get off that pedestal once in a while. And that's where we men come in. Dad, hmm? might I interrupt you? That was Jim Beckwith on the phone. Bill, he told me how you helped to bring his ship down last night and that a control tower operator like you is a pretty important guy on a base. And if you'll find something to do in the house, Dad, I have some more things I want to say to Bill. Oh, oh well, sure. Okay. Uh, remember what I said, Bill? Yes, sir. I will. Bill? You big dope. Come here. First, I'm proud of you. And second... Well, Colonel, just a couple of other things. First, I got my diploma from you yesterday for completing successfully my first ECI course. Second, on the basis of that and my efficiency rating, I've just been promoted to airman first class. And, well, Betty and I have set the date for our wedding, and since you as head of ECI have been sort of connected with it, we would like to have you be our guest at the ceremony. Respectfully, airman first class, Bill Adamson. If you're a service veteran, think about this for a moment. Are you making the most of your service gain skills? Well, here's something you should know. You may qualify to enlist in the United States Air Force in a gray that'll be a real pleasant surprise. You've already earned credits toward a well-paying retirement policy and a secure future. So why not protect your investment? Your Air Force recruiter has a prior serviceman's folder that will give you full details. So write or visit him now. Ask for your copy of this free folder. And remember, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail. Presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force. And this is Dick Herbert speaking, inviting you to tune in to the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>